Hello everyone, it's Rebecca with a Bible Art Journaling Challenge and I am showing you Bible art on the edge. That's right. So I am headed to John 15 verses 1 through 17 where it is talking about Jesus who said that he was the true vine and because God is the word and that kind of goes together, I felt like it would be a good way to communicate a bigger picture on the edges of my Bible. Some of you have tried to do this. I was inspired by Jan Gray to do the edges of my Bible and I'm going to use these stamps and I'm going to start by just showing you on my little tester Bible here how to do it on the pages of a Bible if you have that kind of gold leafing edges like here. And I'm not actually going to get an acrylic block out to stabilize my stamps. Instead, I'm just going to hold them and put them on without. And there's a lot of sticky on this particular set, which is great, but you can kind of hold your edges. But this allows me to kind of cram it onto the edges of my Bible pages rather than it just being straight and whatever's there gets connected to the stamp, I can kind of push it into the edges. And I love the way that this has turned out. I think it's really beautiful. I've chosen specifically on this little Bible to not actually make any effort to fix the leaves, but I will show you how to do that. And here you can see some Yasutomo pearlescent watercolors and this H2O's green color and I've got these all linked over on my blog and I'm just going to use them and by pinching all the pages together the watercolor won't link th leak through and I think doing a pearlescent watercolor on top of gold leaf type of surface is a really beautiful accent and it kind of feels a little bit oldie worldy because I've chosen not to fix the stamps where it isn't just perfect but you can see how beautiful that is. I think it's really fun. And I would love to do this on my Bible that does have gold leafing, which I do do artwork on. And I just wanted to show you in small scale how to do this because I'm going to do something different on that Bible at some point. But for now, I just wanted to show you how to do this and that, yes, you can do a Bible like this that has the edges gold. And how fun is that? So... I'm going to do something different using the same stamps on my Bible here, the journaling Bible that I have, that is specifically made for doing your own journaling in and that sort of thing. And I'm going to use these two plastic plates for the cutting plates for my Sizzix Big Shot die cutting machine. You could just use anything that allows you to squish the pages really well together. And I've deliberately waited until I had a lot of artwork in my Bible to show this to you because I don't want you to feel that because you've done artwork in your Bible, it's impossible to get this to work perfectly because your Bibles don't line up. You can certainly do this and you can see there I'm stamping around corners and no, I'm not getting a perfect image and that's because I've done some artwork in my Bible. And it's totally okay because we're going to fix it here in a moment and I'll show you how to do that. So I'm actually doing it around the rounded corners to just let the image continue. And I felt like these leaves, these fossil leaves from Inca Dinkadu are a perfect way to add some vine leaves to the edges of my Bible to make that point about John 15, about him being the vine and... I'm going to spend time encountering the vine and spending time with him and abiding with him and abiding with that vine and where the branches. So what I'm doing is I'm stamping one particular stamp, kind of varying it all the way around. And then I'm picking up another one and filling in more gaps and then another one and filling in the other gaps. And that way I kind of evenly spread them. And I try and make it look really organic, like the vine is just kind of peeking into the edges. So I move things around and distribute them in different directions. So sometimes the end of the leaf will be showing and sometimes the middle and so on and so forth. So right now it doesn't look like much, but the key is to get it nice and juicy on your ink pad 
and then squeeze very tight and push, 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 and leave it there for some time to let it really soak into the edges of your page. And if you squeeze really hard, your ink will not sort of bleed into the, the margins of your page and look terrible on your pages. Just squeeze hard and then push and leave it there long enough for the ink to actually transfer to that surface. So once you've done these images you will have it start to come together with a little bit of a picture and you can see here I'm going to use this other one just to fill in the blanks and I don't want to overcrowd anything but I'm just doing a little bit and my cutting pads from my big shot machine that you see me using there I actually tried to show it to you that I made sure that it wasn't actually touching the surface and I'm just going to use some pens those are my black pens so I made sure it wasn't the cutting pads weren't touching the surface and then that gave me only the surface of the bible pages to stamp on and now I'm using my pens I tried with the 005 pen and that wasn't great so I'm using a 02 size right now and what I'm doing is I'm going in very slowly I have sped this qu quite a bit for you to watch but I'm basically I'm just going back in and I'm making an accentuated line down the middle and then where the actual main veins would be and then I'm literally kind of very haphazardly squiggling lines in between to make the fossily bit of those leaves and it looks just like the stamps and nobody will notice the difference and I can't even notice the difference now that I've changed. And when it's very thin, I've moved back to this one, but because it is such a small pen, it really struggles to transfer enough ink into that area. So give it a good squeeze and move your Bible around, however, and then you can go around the edges and get everything nice and fixed and looking beautiful before you use it. If you're wondering why I have not used a micron pen for this, which could be a great solution, I haven't because sometimes micron is not entirely waterproof and I don't want to add some watercolor or something like that to the surface of these and have there be an issue with the black ink moving. So I've used Unipin and there's a few others that you could use. Just look for something that is definitely waterproof and then you should have a great result. The most tricky part of this whole process is just making sure that you leave your stamps on your surface and push hard in all the areas long enough for them to transfer that ink onto your surface and using a ink that is definitely not going to move around. That's why I've used archival ink because it is waterproof. It's an oil base ink and I am using pens that are also waterproof so that I can go in with watercolor and I'm using really slow motions. You can see it happening super fast here but I actually moved very slowly so that the ink could transfer as I was doing this and you can see me kind of going in circles with everything and it really works well and is super fun. This is a really exciting project because now every time I open my bible it looks beautiful on the edges and I will make an exception for this particular challenge. If you participate in this and you do anything that is on the edge as part of this, I would love for you to go over to our Facebook group or Google Plus community and share how you've been inspired and done a verse for your on the edge challenge basically. So you can use the scripture of the week or you can just create something on the edge and this would be an example of how to do that and I would love for you to use this first. I think it really makes a lot of sense for creating something on the edge to ref refer to God himself being that true vine. But if you want to do something else, that's okay too. You can see that I've gotten out my 72 set of the ink tense blocks and I'm using them like watercolor. And I am using the beach green color. You could use any green, but I used ink tense because it is waterproof and I felt like it would be the most wearing over time as I'm creating in my Bible page. This would definitely stick around the longest and I wouldn't have it fading or 
um, you know, picking up some liquid and moving around on me. So I'm squeezing tight because it likes to leak in. And I did notice that this particular Bible page, because it doesn't have any edges on it, it's a lot more thirsty, if you can put it that way. This is a lot more thirsty than the gold leafed Bible pages. It will want to leak inside and that's all right. I have to move my brush around in different angles in order to fill in the gaps of the color missing. So you can see me doing it there. I'm going back over it again and that will cause all the white to disappear or the cream in different areas over time and then it will look like a full picture. And I don't feel like this has affected my Bible inside pages at all. It's really, really beautiful. I am far more in love with walking around with this Bible and taking it everywhere with me now that I've done this. It just looks so much fun to look at and it inspires me to open it and spend time in it, which is exactly what we want. Now, before I show you the end results, I just wanna remind you of a couple of quick things. There is a full archive of the Bible Art Journaling Challenge, which you can have a look at on my blog, which is linked below the video if you're on YouTube. So make sure and check it out. It's all free videos. And if you wanna partner with me so that I can help impact more people, please consider joining me on Patreon. There's a video over there. I'll say hi to you and all that kind of stuff. So here are the results and I love how this looks on the edges of the Bible as I'm flipping through. I love how beautiful it looks just sitting closed. It is so much fun. Tell me in the comments if you plan to join me. I cannot wait to see what you will come up with if you come over to the Facebook and Google Plus community. There's a link below the video to head over to the challenge page on my blog so that you can see all about participating and joining me if you haven't yet. And I hope to see you very soon.